Hello, and welcome back to B'nai Noach Academy, Thoughts on the Torah. Please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe, and most importantly, to share these insights and inspiration with friends and family. So when you look at the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 32, You shall rise before the aged and show respect or deference to the old. You should fear your God. I am Hashem. Question. Just because somebody is a little older than me, or a lot older than me in this case, just because somebody had lived, just existed, survived a certain amount of years, I need to rise before them? I need to show them respect? What is this all about? What does this mean? And what lessons does it have for us, especially as we live now in most contemporary of times? Well, let's start with a, an amazing anecdote from the Talmud. The Talmud relates that the sage Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva was the greatest of the sages in the history of Torah scholarship. And he would quote, rise, before an aged person, before an older man, an older woman, an older person, even if they were peasant-like, even if they were absolute ignoramuses. Meaning, it's not because he evaluated and came to an appreciation of their capacity of knowledge, of wisdom, of experience. No, the mere fact just the virtue of the fact that they were old was enough for him, this greatest of the scholars, to show them respect, to stand up before them, and what have you. And his students inquired. They wanted to know why. And he said, the mere fact that God, in his infinite wisdom, saw to it, he found it important for whatever reason. We don't know. We mortal beings cannot know. But he found it important to give them long life. That in itself is a sign for me that they have some virtue. Even if it's not obvious, even if it's not visible. But there certainly is virtue there that God sees. And therefore he found it important to give them longer life. Because we know, and these are my words now, we know that life and death is in the hands of the creator. No one has any control over that, of how long a person should live. Therefore, if the fact is that a person lives that long, that tells us that there is something there, there is a virtue, there is something there. Even if I can't see it, even if I don't appreciate it, that's fine. That's me, my mortal mind, my limited human intellect doesn't see it, doesn't appreciate it. That's fine. But God does. Now, bringing this to our times, we live in a time where, unfortunately, the younger you are, the smarter you consider to be. Out with the old. Anybody who's old, anybody who's lived that many years, ah, they're old-fashioned. What do they know? Especially with all the new technologies and all the new ways of thinking, all the old-fashioned people, ah, what do they know? The truth is that that's not the right way that we should live life. Unfortunately for us, unfortunately for the new generation, and this will actually creep up and rear its ugly head because the fact is that when you have somebody who lived through life, even if they're not the greatest scholar, even if they didn't have all the experiences in the world, but the fact that they lived through so many years, just being alive, living through all kinds of seasons, all kinds of episodes, all kinds of ups, all kinds of downs, having children, having a family, working, making money, losing money, being healthy, not being healthy, all that goes into living that many years in life. That wisdom, that wisdom which comes as a result of their life experience is priceless, is invaluable. That wisdom is one that we need, we meaning the next generation, to learn from. True, every generation has new technologies and new ideas. 
but they're only good when they're complemented, or perhaps I should say even more, when they are on build, being built on the foundation that's already there from the previous generation, from the smarts, from the experience of the previous generation. Woe to the new generation, the so-called new generation that shuns the past, that looks at its elders as some kind of old rags that need to be discarded. So sad, because this is where we get our wisdom. Anybody who follows the Torah, anybody who follows tradition, knows that is the definition of tradition. That is the definition of Torah. Torah has been passed down by tradition. Of course, you try to innovate, you try to come up with new insights and new ideas, but always built on what's there before. If you cut off what was there previously, it's not that you don't have any new good ideas. You have nothing. You've just cut off the source. You've just done away with the foundation. So it's very, very important to respect the elders. And yes, that means when you see an older person, to show them respect, you have to get up before them. And here's what God says, you should fear me. Remember back to the rule that is only, there's an exclusive amount of mitzvot, of commandments, where God uses this expression, you shall fear me. Because sometimes a person can say, no one really knows what's in my mind. The reason why I'm not showing respect to this elder, the reason why I'm not getting up before him or her is because I didn't see them. But you know you saw them. You're ignoring them. It may look like you haven't noticed them. And this is where God comes and taps you on the shoulder and says, I'm watching. You should fear me. And you should fear me because going back to what I said in the beginning of the insight, I'm the one who gave them long life. I am the one who chose to give them the opportunity to go through all those life experiences. I am the one who gave it. So when you're respecting them, you're really respecting me. And I know what's in your mind. So don't play any games. So this is to our benefit when we're able to respect the elders, when we're able to show that we're not just here on our own, so to speak. We didn't just pop up today. We're building on, we're continuing and innovating and improving, hopefully, hopefully, upon the foundation that's already there from the elders, from all their life experiences.